Welcome to the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Pat Nixon Steve. <laughs> yes, I am Pat Nixon Steve. I started out as Batman, and then they said I sounded like the Nixon. And then my name was Steve. I go by many names because I'm Batman Nixon Steve. <laughs> Hello, Pat Nixon Steve. Uh, Thank you. Also joining us today is Totera. I don't have a fancy intro like Silver, except I can say that, yay, now turtles are, the Ninja Turtles are here, and that's my brethren. <laughs> yay. Wait, uh, does that mean you're Zubat Oak Steve? <laughs> well, my name ain't Steve. <laughs> oh, okay. So you're Zubatman. Uh, I mean, I don't fit the part because I'm too big to be uh, Zubatman. <laughs> oh, okay. Also, you're going to say Zubatman, <laughs> hit him with his blue ball. Oh, no, not the blue balls. <laughs> Yes, yeah, the blue Pokeballs. <laughs> oh, boy. So, any who also joining us today is Mad Munchkin. I am so happy that we are discussing Batman stuff today. Yay! Because I love Batman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you guys can't tell, yes, we are going to review Batman vs. the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yay! Uh, so, nice segue uh, there that I set up just for you. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, he didn't... <laughs> I, I I I hit it out of the park, didn't I? Yay! Yeah. Acknowledging it misses it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, in this Swing episode, and a miss. <laughs> in this episode, the teenage mutant ninja turtles come to Gotham City to learn that the Foot Clan and their leader, the Shredder, are working with the League of Assassins, and the Joker puts to uh to put Joker sorry to put Gotham into a state of mutation. Blah 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 blah. Spoilers, whatever. So yay, this this is a fun and interesting setup. Like Turtles and Batman? That's never been done before. In before somebody says it's been done before. It's been done before. <laughs> Simpsons did it. Wait. <laughs> Simpsons did everything. Oh boy. So anywho. So before we officially start, uh, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well, this is a lot of fun. I mean, it's it's thoroughly enjoyable. I felt like it it balanced it well, that it was never too much about the Turtles and not enough about Batman or vice versa. So they there Okay, there is one segment where I felt that it, they were going for the gimmick, but eh, still had fun. And all in all, I'm, I'm thrilled by how it presented everybody. So... Yes, definitely a, a fun watch, and uh, well, we'll get into the specifics a little later. All right, and then, and Tara, what about you? Well, I I like this. I mean, I'm a sucker for crossovers. I love crossover episodes. I mean, back when I watched Power Rangers and I saw Power Rangers with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I was like, oh my god, this is like the best thing ever. <laughs> Uh, and now you see them. Now you see the turtles with Batman. It's like, oh my god, I like Batman. This is like the best thing ever. <laughs> and I like how. It's like pretty much what Silver said, how it's kind of even how you see a, it's not like leaning more towards one person. You see uh, half and half of the turtles and half of Batman. And there were some parts that kind of confused me and some parts that kind of irked me, but I still enjoyed it in the end. All right. And Mandy, what about you? I loved this. This was so much fun because we've had so many Batman movies where. It's just been taking itself too seriously. It's been too dark, too gritty. And I'm like, you know, I used to remember when Batman was a lot of fun as well. And it's nice to have that balance again. Yes, it's still, I mean, it's Batman. It has to be dark and brooding and mysterious and blah, blah, blah. But it's still a comic book. So it's nice to see a movie bring that back again with some exceptions of, say, you know, Batman versus Harley Quinn or... The they brought back the Adam West Batman <laughs> with the there was one with, about Two Face and then another one about um good lord but it was it was um, Catwoman no there there was one where it was I can't remember the name of it that's annoying my brain today where it was the Adam West Batman but then it kind of slowly grew the tone of the Kevin Conroy Batman. And yeah, it was it was brilliant. But anyway, that's not what this is about today. It's about Batman. It's about Batman, Steve. 
Yeah. And I can have many toes because I'm Batman's Nixon Steve. <laughs> Bat Nixon Steve. Uh, but, uh, Maddie, it's funny <laughs> that you say that because the last time you came here to review a Batman series with us was three years ago with The Killing Joke. And that one was Grim Dark. Yes. Yeah, that I was really Grim Dark. I remember that. <laughs> and yeah. probably make a comment about that later. All right. You know. Anyway, <laughs> as for me, this was a lot of fun. I uh, Here's a little backstory of this one. Like, uh, I remember reading the comic for this, but it was not the one that this movie was based on. It was based on another one where uh, the art was similar to uh, Batman, the animated series, and using the 2012 Ninja Turtles. So it was a bit off or it was a bit jarring for me to watch this one while having preconceived notions for the other, uh, for the comics. But Overall, this movie on its own was a lot of fun. Like, getting to see um, Batman being all... I wouldn't say serious. He, he was having a lot of fun. He, he, he was... He, he was just there. Like, having a lot of fun. Just kicking ass like normal. And also fighting Shredder. Yeah, much fun. But anywho, if you guys have not watched this episode yet, or just sorry, if you have not watched this movie yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. Hope you enjoy the episode or the movie because, well, we're going to talk about it a lot. So we start off with a break-in in a lab where we see some ninjas trying to steal something. And we see this intern or... A kid doing a report and her name is Barbara Gordon. Hmm, I wonder whose that is. So the ninjas are foot clans. They came in trying to steal something. But somehow uh, they're stopped by huge reptile creatures. They seem like ninja frogs. Yes. So they beat up the ninjas but they couldn't really stop them because the machine that they were trying to steal got stolen. Oh no, that's bad. So Barbara, here dressed up as Batgirl, reports to Batman talking about or telling him about, hey, uh, there's a break-in in this lab. Uh, it seems that ninjas are doing it. And then it seems that there's big giant lizards. So Batman hears this, hears this from Batgirl and... And I says, okay, I'm on a case. So I'm going to pause here. And Silver, what do you think? Well, it's always interesting with crossovers. Where do you start? Because is it like neutral ground where both parties will meet simultaneously? Or is it one character being the introductory and we we learn about the world through them? So in this case, we're learning about things through uh, through Batman and his half of the world. The Turtles are going to be the exceptional part because they are outside their normal element and in Gotham. It is also funny just to say Ninja Frogs because uh, the Turtles actually did have frogs as ally slash enemy, depending on the day. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused. Which one was that again? Uh, let's see here. Well, I mostly remember the original 80s cartoon where yeah. Shredder mutated four frogs and named them after... Famous conquerors, oh. so Napoleon, Rasputin, I forget the other. T- I'll look these up in uh, Attila and Genghis, Napoleon and Rasputin. Oh, they didn't last long. No, they they appeared in a few episodes, but and they turned out to be pretty cool. Oh, probably co- cooler than their names. <laughs> All righty then. But that's all I got for the moment. All righty then, uh, Tara. What about you? Well, for me, I, I like how it kind of plays off of the beginning. Because at first, I didn't know who that was. Uh, but then once they sh- told me who, it was like, okay, so it's this, this not all bad. They, they'll they be de- have decent protection. But then once you see the Foot Clan, it's like, oh, no, she's not that bad. It's just basically a lot of action. And I guess you could say a bit of suspense, but you know that the day is going to be saved. Although I do have to say, it's like, uh, we know that they're the Foot Clan. But why do they have to have a picture of a foot on their he- heads? <laughs> It's like basically saying, hey, kick me right here on the head. I have a foot here. 
I the red shirted ensign they're real they're really owning up to it now. <laughs> uh, <boys have> no <laughs> idea. Anywho, uh Mary, what about you? What do you think about this first intro? It's funny um we were discussing ninjas the other day, uh, with a couple of friends and I pointed out, well, the thing is if you know what a ninja looks like, they're not a very good ninja, are they? That is true. And they're like, What? And I'm like, well, think about it. A good ninja is one that you never see. So if we know what a ninja looks like, then they didn't do a very good job, did they? So to me, like the Foot Clan, uh, as Tara pointed out, the Foot Clan is like probably one of the worst depictions of ninjas in media, and especially in this movie, because they have a foot. A, not only is it a foot painted onto their forehead, but it is red. <laughs> so, it's, you, might, you might as well paint a bullseye on your forehead. You know, <laughs> that's like. true. But but Mandy, I have to counter something because uh, the foot ninjas are not the worst ninjas in media to date. We got a screaming blonde orange shirt ninja out there. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Yes. <laughs> Although we are what? aware of where the foot come from, uh, in terms of the creation. Oh yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, I was just oh, trying yeah. to be funny, but yeah. No, no, no. Oh, it's no, cool. No, it's no. cool. No, I mean the, I mean the original inspiration. Yeah. From them. You want, you want to explain it, Silver? Yeah, maybe some of the people in the audience don't know. Well, I didn't want, I didn't want, I didn't want to Silver explain it. To oh. Yeah. Uh, but yes, uh, the the foot were originally a parody of. Uh, Marvel's the hand. <laughs> so, you know, that's very handy satire right there. Oh, yeah. And somehow Daredevil was the one responsible for the turtles, somehow? Mm, that I don't know. I wondered if it was the X-Men. No, nah, uh, Long's. Uh, no, I'm going to say that next uh, In the intro for Daredevil, uh, the chemical that made uh, Daredevil blind was the same chemical or same compound that made the turtles. That's how the original comic book went for, but eh. Holy frig. Mm-hmm. But anywho, um, is that all, Mighty? We were just talking about the, the intro, right? Yeah. yeah. I really liked the setup. I really liked how it, it wasn't just random breaking in, in a lab by the Foot Clan. It was like, oh, look, Batgirl just happens to be there. Okay, I can get behind this. I'm I mean, happy. she's there for report, so it was a really... Awesome quinky dink. Yeah. Because then we, we have, like, she kind of bookends the whole thing, which I really appreciated. Batgirl deserves more love. Oh, yeah, true. That, that is true. But anywho, mm. um, carrying on. We see Batman in the Batcave analyzing the uh, for surveillance video that the uh, lab was, the lab had. And he was looking at it and sees that, oh, okay, uh, the sun in just. Then there's other ninjas that have colored headbands. Hmm, this is strange. So I may need to investigate. So in another scene, we see the turtles um, kind of watching the news and trying to figure out where they... Well, they already figure out where the next hit is going to be. And said hit is going to be at Wayne Tower. Uh, we move to Batman and Batman says, Okay, yeah, I'm going to go there to protect my uh, hideout and whatnot or my workspace so yeah this is gonna be awesome so batman heads to the wayne tower via batmobile and the turtles are well jumping around like ninjas we meet up with the penguin trying to rob the place because he also figured out that hey there's a lot of robberies going on and they're hitting up places that have a prototype tech so I want in on this. So if I were to steal something before they do, I can sell it to the highest bidder. Yeah, smart plan. So the penguin tries to steal it before anybody does. But they are stopped by four ninja frogs. Yes, that's what they say. And while this is going on, we see the Foot Clan entering the building trying to steal the prototype. A weather machine thingy. But it seems that, hey, they're distracted or they're fooled by um, holograms. Oh no. So Batman's there and he stops all of the Foot Clan. 
Well, most of them. So he kicks ass and, well, we split to the turtles outside trying to, well, stop the penguin's goon. We see the turtles beat them up and, yeah, (laughs) there's no challenge. There's no challenge. The turtles win. And uh, there's a few banters here and there. Mikey is impressed with uh, the penguin's umbrella sword gun thingy or gun blade, gun umbrella blade, if you want to call it. And yeah, they, they stop him and uh, Penguin escapes with a bat, uh, with a umbrella copper or something like that, whatever it is. We join Batman again and yeah, Batman beats up the Foot Clan's ninjas and question one of them. Before uh, the ninja could say anything, he is shuriken in the head by Shredder. Batman stops Shredder and, well, they have an awesome fight. The fight scene goes on really well. Um, watch it for yourself if you have not watched it because it's really awesome. But I do have to point out one thing. Uh, before um, Shredder escapes, Shredder does this awesome move that really beats the crap out of the Batman. Batman goes down, but still, he got some good hits in though. So yeah... With that, the Shredder escapes, um, kind of hurt a lot, and Batman is left, well, coughing blood. We join back with the Turtles, uh, tying up the Penguin's goons, and, well, they say that it was a waste of time dealing with Penguin's goons, because they thought that Shredder already stole the weather machine thingy. No, I'm gonna stop you. Terra, what do you think? Well, I really like this part because it has a lot of uh, action, like in both sides, and I also like the comedy and hidden references, like when the turtles pop out of the sewer and they're looking at the map of where the next location is going to be. You see on the right of the map, it's like, oh yeah, LexCorp is there too, and then you see Batman not uh, drinking the Superman cop- coffee mug, and it's like, oh look at these references. Yeah. But I also like, t- like, like I said about the funny part, like, another part that made me uh, laugh is when one of the foot members, he's like, trying to stab one of the workers, and it doesn't go through, it's like, Hulk, and he's like, what? And he's like, stab, 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 he's not dying! <laughs> Why is he not dying? Murder isn't working, it's all we're good at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I really enjoy this, and with all the fast-paced action, and how the turtles handle Penguin, although, to me... Uh, I don't know, I can't take him seriously because to me, Penguin kind of sounds like Waluigi. Oh. I mean, I'm not wrong. Please tell me I'm not wrong. Uh, technically, you're wrong because it's, he sounds more like the uh, Spongebob. Really? Yep. Ah. Tom Kenny. <laughs> oh, to me, he sounds more like Waluigi. <laughs> Tom Kenny plays uh, the Penguin. <laughs> and for yeah. you guys at home who got no idea who Tom Kenny is, Tom Kenny is well known for voicing the role of Starscream and Spongebob. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you'll get there and eventually. Yes. <laughs> Megatron! Megatron! They've got me voicing SpongeBob! Patrick! Patrick! Oh, ah! boys. Lex Luthor plays Mr. Krabs. So, yeah. yeah. Well, they have a cream for that. <laughs> That's true. But if there's, a, if there's one thing I'm going to be a little bit nicky picky about, me, this is just my opinion. It's Donatello's head. I mean, I don't know. It's like, it's more, it looks squished a bit to me uh, compared to Leonardo and everyone else. Yeah, he, he, he he's the oddball out. Yeah. And the one thing, I, I'm sorry, I know I brought this up earlier, but I just can't take Shredder or the Foot Clan seriously. Like when Shredder's about to do that strike on uh, Batman, he's coming down, you get ready to do that jitsu. You see the red circle go around him and then you see the foot. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> Uh, yeah. to, to... But I still enjoyed it, though. Alright, alright, alright. Then, Mehdi, what do you think? I first started this movie, I didn't know what certification it was, and um, I wasn't expecting the gore. Oh. I was like, oh, okay. I was not expecting that. So it was a nice surprise to see that we've got Batman facing off against Shredder, and it's not holding back at all. Both pretty de- pretty evenly matched, I would think. Except Batman has the advantage because he has more gadgets and stuff. Blah blah blah. I don't. I just had so much fun with it. I was like, oh, there's all the references. I lost it when I saw Batman drinking from the Superman cup. <laughs> yeah, <that, that laughs> I was, was like, hooray! References galore. I love this. 
Yeah, and, and if you notice, right, uh, Bruce didn't even notice what cup he was drinking from. No, I was waiting for him to go, is this a joke? <laughs> but nope, it's too focused on what he's doing. <laughs> so in character, love it. Yeah. Oh, uh, Lord. <laughs> but, but anywho, uh, Silver, what do you think? <laughs> the penguin only has one true voice. <laughs> but not really. Still, I'll, I'll always remember the Adam West Batman. Yeah. And, peng- and Penguin. <laughs> when uh, this this is the introduction to show everyone being awesome. Because, okay, the Penguin and his disposable goons. Not a, not a big loss, especially the goons. I, although the scene where Raph kicks them off the roof into a dumpster. Mm. He's like, Raph, what if there hadn't been a dumpster there? I knew it was there. I know. <laughs> but it gets to show everybody pretty awesome with a little villain swap. The turtles uh, make mincemeat of the foot of uh, the penguins, goons, Batman, uh, whales on the foot. I gotta say, the foot have one hell of a retirement plan. I mean, he wasn't even giving anything away. I was like, what? You're talking about turtles? <laughs> oh, I'm dead. <laughs> and then Shredder. Here's the funny thing. Even in the 80s cartoon, Shredder was meant to be a formidable uh, combatant. People like to... I find that, funny enough, everyone likes to try and dump on the 80s cartoon. Oh, it was so lame. It was so silly. I couldn't take these characters uh, as genuine threats. And yet, even though the the Shredder was a a better combatant, the fact that he can actually outfight Batman really adds some validity. Yeah. I mean, if Batman if Batman won the first round, then for the rest of the movie, he's like, okay, why are these guys a threat? Batman already knows how to beat them. But uh, here's, here's another fun fact. Uh, in the original comic for the Turtles, Shredder was hardcore. Like, he was a really good fighter. And <laughs> here's, here's another fun fact about the Shredder. Um, the comic creators just wanted... Just wonder, like, what would happen if we put a grater on a person's hand and use them as what uh, godless or something like that? And that's that's uh, how the shredder was born. <laughs> oh, there you go. Maybe all that cutlery is for making coleslaw. Yeah, true that. True that. But yeah, yeah you were saying something. <laughs> well, first off, I got I, I got a ding, yeah. <laughs> you did. You, you did the double talk. <laughs> but. So this is a fun introduction where, again, it's balancing things out. Everyone gets to have their moment in the sun and to have some good humor. I forget if this is the point where Michelangelo, who he's probably the hardest character to either, either he's really funny or really intrusive. And I think they, they managed to make him more funny than anything. But I forget if this is where he comments on what's with all the blimps. <laughs> yep, yeah, it's true. <laughs> That's a good point. Why are there so many blimps? <laughs> what are they used for? <laughs> and you know, honestly, what are they used for? Like, that's a bad way to surveil things. <laughs> uh, they keep an eye on things, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't run the budget. Ask Commissioner Gordon. <laughs> he's not yeah. the mayor. Uh, you never know. He might be at one point. Surely in some iteration, he's gone for mayor. I don't know. But anywho, uh, is that all Silver? Yeah, you could always ask the other Batman. <laughs> <laughs> but... As we move on, just that this is a really fun introduction, and it's just that right balance of Batman's seriousness and awesome versus the turtles' levity. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I'm going to carry on. So, talking about turtles and Batman, uh, we spot that the turtles are in the corner. Uh, well, they're in the alley where they kick down the goons, and hey, they spot something, and it's the Batmobile. Everybody is impressed. Ref tries to play it like it's nothing, but he is impressed. And look at it. It's huge. It has four, well, six wheels. Like, that's crazy. Look at that thing. It's awesome. But anywho, um, the turtles are impressed with the Batmobile, but somehow they are attacked by the Batman. And, well, Batman being who he is, uh, kind of doesn't like people staring at his car. Leo wants to play this safe and says that we should uh, 
slow down and analyze things. But Ref says he got this. And he gets his patootie kick in. So, yeah, let's just say that uh, this is another fight scene where it's really awesome. So I'm just going to skip it. So the turtles get their ass handed to them and they retreat. Batman just comments that, huh, who are they? Um, they're, they're strange. So we cut to the villains uh, in a warehouse where they're developing a machine. Baxter Stockman is there and it seems that he is working slash kidnapped by the Foot Clan. Baxter Stockman just asks, uh, did he get the machine and whatnot? And Shredder says, no, and don't ask me about it again. Baxter tells Shredder that, okay, um, I won't, but you have to explain this to our partner. And said partner is Rajal Ghul, who is, well, questioning Shredder or berating for his failure. Rash has a plan, and well, we won't know their plan until later. We switch to the turtles, and we see them uh, doing a bit of research on who attacked them. We all know it's Batman, and after a few hours of research, they know it's Batman. Raph just comments, no duh, like, guy dresses in a bat, who he is, Zoo Batman? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so, anywho... Just make sure you bring more high potions next time. <laughs> but, anywho, the total research, uh, who he is and whatnot, and, well... Leo just comments that, okay, we need to... We don't have any clues anymore because that was the last. So we need to find the Batman and, well, uh, work with him or at least find some answers. Like, he could be the one working with the Shredder. So, yeah, we, we need to find where he is and how to find him. And Donatello has an idea and, well, he goes looking for the answer. We switch to the Batman where Batman is analyzing the side that he stole from Raphael and uh, extract his DNA and notice that yeah, it's turtle DNA mixed with a bit of mutagen. So yeah, this could be part of the plan. Batgirl just comments to Batman that hey, um, there were some penguin goons outside your tower and they mentioned that they were attacked by Ninja frogs. Batman just comments it was turtles and um, say that hmm, probably they are not bad, but we got no idea yet, so we need to figure them out. So I am going to pause here. So guys, Terra, no, I would. I went for Terra. Oh, so, yeah, you went for me last right, time. So, Maddie, what? What about you? What do you think? There's a lot to chew over with this, like, with having the the turtles meet Batman and it's like, oh, are they, are they, they're going to be fighting against each other and the turtles are like, just going full on, like, don't care who he is, let's just fight him, like, let's just ask questions later and meanwhile Batman's trying, he's like, I'm not going to fight them, I just want to observe and <laughs> in the best way that Batman does and just dodges most of their attacks. Having fun as a nerd just watching them fight was just yay. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the fight scene was awesome. Uh, like I, I had It really was. Yeah. yeah. I, I personally had for this review, I just personally had to just say, Nope, go watch it yourself because each scene, each fight, like you can see the Batman is clearly not trying to hurt the turtles. Like he's just trying to find out who they are. Like are they people in costumes and whatnot. And the way that he fight them is like using his utility belt, using his tools just to take them out was really fun. Like, normally we don't see Batman fight like this. I'm worried I'm going to skip ahead uh, with we're talking about it. Oh, when the turtles are trying to research who who this guy is and it takes them hours and it's like just a Google search Batman. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's kind of obvious. And <laughs> and Batman's kind of already sussed them out. He just doesn't know if if they're an enemy or what yet. So he's still cautious about it. But the and the turtles are like Batman. He's awesome. 
<laughs> we should find him again. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mikey's diagram about them just is just typical teenagers. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> yeah, Mikey's diagram of him is just too awesome. Like, oh, he's a guy. He has a car. He's a Batman. But if he's evil, they'll be bad, and he'll he he kick our asses. <laughs> Is just drawing up on the blackboard. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. I loved that. It's great. Anyway, uh, I'm not being very articulate in in talking about this. My apologies. It's all good. It's... There's just a lot to yeah. talk yeah, about. There, there is, yeah. And I'm, I'm like, where do I start? I, I know. Like, <laughs> even for me, yeah. I, I have to cut down and kind of shut up because oh, okay. okay anyway, anyway, um, silver. What do you think? Well. Okay, you had you've established the shredder as uh, a threat, a very awesome threat. He's just it's just uh, now we know he can go toe to toe with Batman mm. and maybe even win. But we also need to establish that Batman is an equal to a team of four turtles. Yeah, they're sort of a, a pecking order, <laughs> and I'm at the top of the pecking order because I'm Batman. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were going to make a penguin joke, but okay. <laughs> there you I'm go. at the bottom of the order. Because <laughs> pecking. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I enjoy a pecking duck. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, seeing the turtles just geek out over the Batmobile, especially love the line, how much do you think that costs? My soul? Because that's what I pay. <laughs> So, just, there's that fun dynamic, but I don't know if I agree with you guys saying Batman's not trying to hurt them, because, you know, uh, Batmobile, Taser, level four, was Seven. it? Seven. So, level, good God, yeah, that's that's more that's more than double what I, no, not more than double, wow, my math Double awful. minus one. <laughs> but, double minus one, oh, thank you, Norman, I, I appreciate the attempt <laughs> to save my dignity, but it ain't there. <laughs> But, and, uh, of course, the, the great humor, Mikey getting thrown into a pizzeria. <laughs> Good choice. Hey, everyone, look look out. There's a guy dressed as a bat beating people up. Uh, uh, fun fact. Sorry, sorry fun fact. Um, that, that that scene happened in the comics, too. And uh, in the comic, it was hilarious even there, too. Did they, did they have the line, think fast? Bonk. Oh, he thought too fast. I, I don't remember. Like I just saw pictures of it, just for reference. But yes. Oh dear. Well, if I continue on like this, I will. I will just quote and requote yeah. the whole this, movie. This movie is just awesome. There's a lot. To, there's a lot to quote. So basically, this fight scene does a great job of again balancing humor and awesome choreography. Th- things you you would think wouldn't work and honestly it's probably been the bane of the turtles for a while people thinking you can't have a serious fight and be silly at the same time well here's mikey saying hold my pizza <laughs> no wait, wait a minute no give me that back <laughs> Nom. so and i feel bad for for leo trying trying to play it safe but he's got raf as as a teammate and brother yeah who is a bit impulsive a bit that is an understatement norman <laughs> Uh, but still, anyway, uh, are you done, Silver? For now, uh, I may yet quote. All right, either. Anyway, I'm going to carry on. So we joined the. I didn't oh, state my opinion. You haven't. Oh, sorry, my bad, my bad. Sorry. Oh man, uh, three people, three <laughs> people on here is losing track. Okay, anyway, uh, sorry, Tara. Uh, what about you? Well, I mean, there's not really much to say. You guys very much explained the fight. Although I am going to get nitpicky about one thing, which is the. Um, I can say the debate between Raph and Leo because every Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie or so, it's always like they forgot about the lesson thing and how Leo's the leader, but Raph's like, no, I'm doing this my way. It's like, okay, you've been through this so many times. Like, can't we just go for the fact that, yeah, Raph understands Leo and now he's going to listen to him, but no, he still goes with, no, I'm not going to listen to him. It's every movie or every time the t- Turtles are involved. But that's the thing about, what you call this, um, the series, like every rendition of the Turtles, is kind of a reboot. Uh, the '87 cartoon to the 2003 to the 12, and so on. The the only exception to this is with the uh 2018 Turtles. Is it 18? Yes, 2018. Uh, Rise of the 
Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, this one, they put Ralph as the leader of the group instead of Leo. Hmm. And but that's the one I I don't hear anyone talking about. Yeah, let, let's just say that it's not memorable. Like I don't know, man. Like it seems so off. It's jokey and whatnot. It's quote unquote pony life. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll tackle that another time. Oh, if we do, like I'm sh- pretty sure what I'm gonna say next is probably gonna make some people a bit oh. angry. Oh. I don't know who Ra's al Ghul is or whatever. I don't even know if I said that name right. Ready? You're uh, a fan. It varies. Yeah, I don't know who he Are is. Are you angry? Oh, uh, me? Yeah. Because he doesn't know who Ra's no, is? N- no, because um, Ra's al Ghul or Ra's al Ghul or however you pronounce his name, I wouldn't really... Con- he's not really obscure, but he's not as well known because he's not as much fun as other Batman villains, I guess. But if you're a Batman fan, you should have some idea of who Ra's al Ghul is or Ra's al Ghul because he trained Batman how to fight. Really? Um, yes, he was one of the people that trained him how to do jiu-jitsu and all that. Yeah, but no, uh, I'm not angry that you don't know who Ra's al Ghul is. All right, all right, all right. Anyway, uh, Tara, anything more to add? No, that's everything. All right, then, if that's the case, I'm going to carry on. So we join back with the turtles, swimming... And they discover a cave. The cave is well lit. Huh, I wonder. So, Donnie just says that, okay, uh, I did some mathematical things with some geolocation thingy magic, and I have discovered where the Batman is. And we have reached his Batman cave. Ooh, isn't this awesome? <laughs> Ooh. And they geek out at all the things that are there. Uh, Donnie loves the computers. Uh, Mikey just l- loves everything. He even wore a cowl while riding a T-Rex. Yeah. You don't get to see that every day. And, well, guess who? Uh, Robin is there uh, trying to kick the crap out of the turtles because they are intruding in the pet cave. So, th- <laughs> this is really interesting for me because the turtles are trying not to hurt Robin because well he's a kid like the turtles are not mean or they're, they 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 were her kid like who are they monsters but uh, Damien here doesn't really care and tries to attack them um and yeah Mikey somehow gets on top of him and s- just sits on him and Batman arrives uh saying how did you get here and whatnot and Donnie explains but it got shut down because um, Batman doesn't want to hear constructs, <laughs> constructive... Mm, how do you say the word? Constructive criticism? Yes, mm-hmm. no? Yeah. Yep, you yeah. got it. All right, thank you. So anyway, um, they compare notes and just says that, okay, uh, we're here because we are out of leads about the Shredder. So clearly you're not working for him, so that's good. So we need to find the shredder because we think he's working with someone in your town and well with them not being enemies uh, robin just tells okay uh it was rajal ghul he's the guy that's working with the shredder <coughs> then we cut away to raj and he is in Ar- arkham trying to f- get his well uh he made a deal with one of the inmates and said inmate is the joker uh should i spoil what he's after or should i just hold it for later i think it's okay to say what he's after it makes the talking about the story a bit more fluid yeah all right yeah we're we're not talking in vagaries like a JRPG. <laughs> All right, then. So anyway, uh, Raj is there to meet up with the Joker because he wants to get his formula for the Joker gas. Was it Joker Venom? Joker Venom. Yes. <clears throat> so anywho, yeah, he is there, and well, he gives it to Raz, and the deal is he gives Raz the Venom, and. In return, he gets a bit of the mutagen or ooze or whatever you want to call it. And 
should I stop here or go on a little bit further? A little further. This is... Honestly, this is about to get to what I consider to be the weakest sequence of events. All right, then. So, uh, with that deal made, we join with the Turtles. They're kind of having a bit of banter, getting to know each other. Uh, we see Mikey crashing into Alfred carrying a box of pizza. We see Batman and Leo sparring. Uh, Ref and Robin working on the computers and searching who Raz is. And Donnie and uh, Batgirl trying to make a anti-mutagent for, well, whatever's going on. So with that, they hang out for a bit and... Leo explains who the Shredder is and who their father is and what Shredder did with his uh, moving hand strike. I would like to call it a fireball without the fire. So with that, they hang out for a bit, eat pizza. And Batman here is all serious like, like, oh, okay, it's time to work. No pizza. No pizza party for you guys. And Michelangelo here just says, come on, guys, pizza, pizza's fun. I'm Batman. I don't do fun. Brr. Oh, no. So, the bad computer uh, rings an alarm, stating that, hey, Arkham is being attacked. So, we need to go there now. It could be Raz and stuff, because Commissioner Gordon said there was ninjas over there. And it fits the description of the foot. So, yay. They go there, and, well... Uh, action is about to start. Action is about to start. So, I'm going to pause here. So, Silver, what do you think? Well, I mean, this is mostly... Okay, we, we're past the heroes fighting one another. Now it's the part where they talk and start to establish character relations with one another. So, a lot of it makes sense. I, I find it kind of fitting that, that Mikey, is the his counterpart is Alfred. <laughs> the, mo- the most expressive and earnest of the turtles with the most dour and snarky of uh, butlers. But we're on the cusp of what I would call the weakest part of the story because it's just filler. And I guess I'll get into that when we actually have the conflict. But all in all, this is just a a fun introduction. I should also clarify, I believe what they were, what the Shredder was trying to steal from Wayne Tech was a cloud seeder. So that's meant to assist with creating rain. All right, my bad, my bad. Like, I kind of remember it. Yes, no stuff. Yes, no, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. But that, that's all for right now. Already? Oh, okay. That was kind of a lot, but anyway. anyway um, Tara, what do we think? Well, so, like I said earlier, how I didn't know about Raz, but... See, or, yeah. And uh, just seeing him taking out all these security guards in uh, Arkham, and I'm just like, oh my god! <laughs> Like, you don't see the blood when he cuts off the one guy's head, but you see, you hear the blood spilling. It's like, oh, I wasn't expecting it to be this much gore. <laughs> yeah, this movie has a lot of that. Like, uh, there's this one scene near the back where, uh, the, the uh, how, how do I put this? Oh, he'll be fine. He escaped. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Look at him. He's in the background parachuting. Yeah. <laughs> and, but, uh, I, really enjoyed it how the uh the turtles and batman are getting along it's like yeah at first you know we kind of have a bit of a fight because we didn't know each other but later on now we're starting to get to know each other and i like how michelangelo is around alfred and then you see him later on how he's holding the bandages like a little kid he's like no you must behave yourself <laughs> it's, it's just really f- fun like, it's there's a lot to explain it's just one of those movies that you have to see for yourself yeah i, that I agree with that i agree with Although now I'll take a quote from Mikey where if someone's bothering me or if I'm just trying to get in an argument with someone, I'll just be like, I can't hear you, I'm in my shell. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's a good one. Anyway, uh, Maddie, what do you think? Yeah, it was, this was, as Silver said, this is filler. This is where we're seeing the, how the dynamics are between all of these characters, who's going to be paired off with who later on, where, you know, this is where setups are made and then the payoffs are later on with the, the, the fighting scenes, etc. But it was just really fun to see the, the turtles being teenagers. Like, just being, like, they're roughhousing or they're they're annoying the butler and he's just trying to 
parent them basically because Batman's having nothing to do with them at this point because he's just like god more people in my cave I just I just want to solve the mystery on my own I don't need all this chaos going on behind me what <laughs> um sometimes scenes like this they can be slow they can really cause pacing problems but for me I loved this I especially loved um Alfred and Mikey and he's just like trying to get him back down the stairs and he like pulling his ear if that was possible <laughs> but obviously he doesn't have ears so he can't do that but it was just Alfred's just like I'm just trying to get the housework done can you just leave me alone for five minutes <laughs> I, I loved this it was just so much fun and again there's yeah. just so much that you could dig into here but yeah, it, a lot of it is just you have to see it for yourself to yeah. believe it. There's really. a there's there's a line yeah. in the movie where uh, Alfred just says, "Oh, I I offered them to make them a five star meal. Oh, <laughs> but no, they want pizza. <laughs> they want pizza." <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Makes me wonder if that's how things are with Maddie and Mary Sue. Oh lordy. <laughs> <laughs> but there's actually one thing I forgot to mention, which is also going to be a bit nitpicky mm -hmm. about, is where's the security in the bat cave? Like you're you're a billionaire or whatever, and you have a man shed, and you also have a bat cave underground, and the turtles just could easily swim into it and just easily get into it. And while they're walking around, I'm like, where's the alarm system? And even though he explains later on, yeah, your alarm system's weak. It's like <laughs> you don't check that. <laughs> The, the the point of entry is one of those things where it, it, it requires a specific set of creatures or tools to get in, and well, they're turtles, they're amphibian. They can yeah, they they can breathe underwater for a bit, so they're suited for that scenario. But yeah, where, where's the alarm? I, I think there's a silent alarm, probably. Needs to be less silent. <laughs> uh, but anywho, I'm going to carry on. Okay. So we go back to Arkham where the villains are out and Joker introduced them to a plan or something he has. So he rigs the sprinkler with some mutagen, transforming the DC villains into mutated forms of, well, uh, chaos. Yes. So Batman and the Turtles arrive at Arkham Asylum and are greeted to a hyena Harley Quinn. Oh, wow. So, before they can attack, or before they rush in, Batman says, okay, we need to be smart because the villains here are crazy strong, even before they got mutated. So, uh, Leo, you with me, Raph, Mikey, and Damien, and Batgirl, and Donnie. Now, split up. Uh, that's a bad idea. But anywho. Batman gives a pep talk that's not really a pep talk, but still, it's somehow a pep talk. <laughs> uh, they split up. So, we first see uh, Damien, Mikey, and Ruff go into the kitchen and are greeted by a villain named Mr. Freeze. And he is a polar bear. Uh, he's a polar bear with ice guns and whatnot. Yeah, that, that's so him. Mikey comments that, oh wow, he is awesome. He got uh, he got the ice puns down. Oh wow, he's so awesome. Uh, he's really enjoying the current situation. Uh, I guess he really likes Arnie then. Then we split off from them to go up to Batgirl and Donnie. Uh, they two talk for a bit and Batgirl asks Donnie, um, does the mutagen change your personality and whatnot? Uh, Donnie just says, no, not really, but it does change your mannerisms a bit. Because, well, if you're a dog, you're going to act like a dog a bit more. Yes, and before they could talk a bit more, uh, they're attacked by Bane. And, yeah, they, they got their ass handed to them for a bit now. And, yeah, that's not great. So, we move on to the next group, Batman and uh, Leo. And they are attacked by... The Scarecrow, and he is a crow. He's scary. And Leo got infected by Scarecrow's fear toxin. And yeah, the, the setup here is hero introduced to villains, and they fight. So, 
how, how do I want to handle this? Let's just cover sort of a lump sum event. Yeah, I'm just going to rush through. Ref's team fight Mr. Freeze, but runs away because he's too strong. Uh, Donnie and Batgirl, well, they kick the bejesus out of Bane because Bane is stupid enough to uh, try to break Donnie's back. Yeah, not going to work. And Batgirl just used a dumbbell and knock him out. While Leo hears what Batman has to say by focusing and giving the final blow to Scarecrow. And Batman cures Leo with an uh, antitoxin that he created for Scarecrow. Yes, so with that, they head to a meeting spot where they meet up with the whole group. Uh, but before that, we, we get to see Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy is turned into a plant creature monster thingy. Uh, she's happy with it and tries to attack Raph, Mikey and Damien. But since she's rooted down to the ground, they couldn't really... She couldn't really reach them. <laughs> and yeah, that's funny. The whole group gathers up in the auditorium where Two-Face is holding two hostages. So I'm going to pause here because... After this, it's just going to be hectic and manic. So, uh, Silver, is it you? Uh, no, I think Torterra gets first dibs now. Really? Yes. All right. So, Torterra, what do you think? Well, I like how the um, the ooze gives gives them like the um, the I guess that you could say the perfect animals for them. Although missed opportunity because when Mister Freeze transformed and you saw his, how floofy his face was, I thought he was going to be a yeti. But then it turns out he's a polar bear. It's like I, I don't mind him as a polar bear, but I was kind of expecting him to be more of a yeti. Yeah, the the transformation scene there seems like it, but no. Nah. Yeah. You ain't seen nothing yeti. Nah. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> yes, sigh. 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 Because I bet Nixon suffer, Steve. So. <laughs> but as for the other animal transformations, I don't mind them. I mean, I did enjoy how Scarecrow is actually a crow and Bane is like um, a, a cheetah? Jaguar. Uh, jaguar. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh it, looked, it looked kind of like a cheetah to me. Although, I was a bit horrified, because I did grow up with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and in, I know it's a nightmare too, but seeing, like, the skeletons of the brothers, <laughs> um, again, I, was ex- I wasn't expecting it to be this dark. It's like, it's these, they're all skin and, and then bones now. <laughs> and then they blew away. <laughs> yep, they turned into dust. Oh, well, yeah, that, that is creepy, but that does uh, state the risk that, uh, or let's put a stick on Leo for losing his brother, which kind of a talking point later on. Well, I like, I can't really say much because again, this is something you have to see for yourself. There's a lot of action, like a lot of funny moments. So we can only talk about so much, but there's still so much you gotta see. And one part that was actually pretty good, I, I really enjoyed. I got a laugh out is when Poison Ivy appears. Is like, oh my god, she's a big plant. This is gonna be a hard battle because she's got all these arms. Like, oh yeah, we can't. She can't be just. Let's just go around to the other door. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, uh, Maddie, what do you think? When you see the delight on Joker's face when he gets the mutagen, I'm like, oh, what is he going to do with that? And you could, you just know what's coming. And I was just spending the whole time going, what is he going to mutate into? So then it was a bit like, well, okay, Har- Harley's hyena, then Mr. Freeze is a polar bear, but yeah, I have to agree with you, Terry, he should have been a yeti. Uh... <laughs> Bane is Jaguar, and Two-Face is a two-headed cat. Um, yeah, uh, I loved that. Two-Face is my favorite Batman villain. It was just pure just Joker chaos. Just like, I'm just doing this because it's fun. And yeah, it, it, this scene was just so much fun. Just seeing all of the different battles going on individually. But yeah, the one that steals the show is Poison Ivy. And they're just like, so should we just go around her then? Because <laughs> she can't reach them. I'm like, oh, you set this up and it's so creepy and it harkens back to the boss fight in Arkham Asylum oh. where she's the giant plant. But they're like, let's just go around her. And it's like, oh yeah, that's a good point. We should have been able to do that in the game. 
<laughs> yeah, because she's rigid in one place. <sighs> when, when you think about it, right? I love when, when that. You, when you think about it, right? Uh, she mutated on the spot where she got out of the prison. So basically, she yeah. hasn't moved and hasn't realized oh. that she couldn't move. <laughs> if she took an extra few steps closer to the door, then maybe she would have reached them. Yep, <laughs> true. <laughs> uh, but anywho, yeah. uh, Silver, what do you think? Well, I mean, I I feel for Prozen Ivy. We are all rooting for her. <laughs> <laughs> something yeah, yeah, yeah. to throw in your general direction or something to just be angry about because I didn't make that joke. <laughs> well, I, I mean, it's why I'm here. I'm a plant. It even reminds me of a scene from Michelangelo where when they knock on Mr. Freeze, he's like, if you can't take the heat, and the other's like, please don't. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Although, I kind of wonder if they did that with Poison Ivy, that it's really hard, even in a cartoon that's trying to be grim and gritty, to have your heroes hit a woman. Hmm. I think that just, that really sets people off. So this was almost a get out of jail free card. Not really, because later on we get to see Harley Quinn get her patootie kick by uh, one of the turtles, I think. Do we? I have to. I have to brush up on that scene. Yeah. But here's the thing: I'm going to be a bit of a fuddy duddy because while there is a lot of fun to be had in, in witnessing all this, it is a stall. Well, heck, the entire reason they're doing it is to stall the heroes. It's a mm. diversion. It's letting the gimmick take control. Of the story, and while I there, I have no qualms that people have fun with it because it is fun to see. There's also a part of me that's like, okay, you, you had a thing going for a while, but now suddenly we're just sort of waiting for get back to the actual conflict. Yeah, this this yeah. is just a distraction, and that's why I, I'm a fuddy duddy. I am a duddy of the fuddies. <laughs> oh, shame. I was like, I'm actually going to have to agree with Silver yeah. because I'm kind of fast forwarding here. I won't go into detail, but pretty much by the end of, I guess you could say, the whole side plot, I looked at it and I'm like, wow, we're only like halfway through the movie. I thought we were close to being done. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. But yeah, uh, what Silver says is true. Um, it's mm-hmm. kind of a uh, filler. And it's not a bad filler. It does explain a bit of what we'll, what was the plan. So... Uh, is there anything more to add, Silver? Just that in some cases, I was like, okay, I, I, here I am, the guy who loves puns, but even I'm looking for the director to come on screen and say, ah, ah, get it? He was called the Scarecrow, and now he's a crow that scares people. Get it? Mm-hmm. Get it? Ah, ha, 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 Laugh, damn you. <laughs> Laugh. <laughs> I I did find myself going, oh lord, he's a crow, an actual crow, <laughs> and then of course I was just delighted with it, yeah, because of the pun. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it was also the point. It was like, just get back to the plot a little bit as well. Yeah. As fun as it was, it was kind of padding the story out. Yeah, and on on top of that, if you really think about it, Harley Quinn was a hyena. So, uh, but anywho, uh, is that all, Silver? Well, just one final thought. I understand why Bane wouldn't become a cheetah, because as we all know, cheetahs never prosper. <laughs> <laughs> um, Saw that one coming. But, well, there you go. But anyway, it was spot on. <laughs> Uh, oh, no. <laughs> a- anyway, I'm gonna carry Didn't on. see that. Gonna... Didn't see that coming, did you? Yeah. No. Nope. <laughs> Penguin likes it. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna carry on. So, uh, okay. we meet up in the auditorium where Two Face is holding host- two hostages, and S- Joker slithers in and reveals himself to be a snake. So, uh, he and Harley chat up for a bit and kiss. <laughs> uh, let's just say that it's disturbing. Yes, dis- disturbing. Mm. Uh, Sums up their relationship quite well. Yeah, that's true. So, anywho, um, uh, Raph and the group all comes in and just notice, like, oh, there's a hostage. Batman says, wait up, guys. Uh, Joker always has a plan for this kind of scenario. But Raph doesn't listen and goes in. 
And well, Rev goes in and Leo has to follow because he has to back up his brother. And Two-Face shoots at them and well, it's revealed that Joker set them up and well, they go into a brawl. And I'm going to skip a few here because the brawl's awesome and whatnot, but it's just padding. So after the brawl, uh, Batman gets freeze by Mr. Freeze, Freeze Ray. And Joker here explains the plan. A little bit of the mutagen and my venom will create something insane. And he injects Batman with the serum transforming into Man Batman. With that, he kind of beats up most of the villains and Donatello and Batgirl appears. And, well, with the only uh, anti-mutagen that they have, they use it on Batman, saving his life and turning him back to Batman Man. Remember Batman. They head to the Batcave and help Batman recover. While that's going on, we see Penguin uh, getting the Cloud Seeder back from wherever it was and giving it to Raj al Ghul. And before getting paid, um, well, Raj kill all of Penguin's goons and leave him with nothing. And the only thing Penguin can say, okay, I'm just going to put this as a resume experience. Ugh. <laughs> so, in the Batcave, we see the group figuring out what they are building and whatnot. And by doing a bit of research, okay, they are planning to make a Cloud Seeder machine thingy where it combines the Venom and the Mutagen to spread around Gotham to make them into mutants to create chaos. Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Batman wakes up and tells the turtle off because they're impulsive and they don't listen to orders and tells him that they can handle this. Um, Robin just says, yo, dad, that's not a good plan because um, they kind of help you uh, when you were Man Batman. And Raph goes up to Batman telling that I like to brute too. I hate my brothers. They are annoying and whatnot. But when the chips are down, family always helps you. And he tells it to Batman. And well, Batman kind of understands. And they work with each other to stop, well, Raz and Shredder. And here's something fun. Uh, Mikey calls shotgun riding with Batman and the rest of the group rides on the turtle mobile. Yay! And well, I'm going to pause here because after this, there's a lot of skipping. And... Silver? Yes? <laughs> so what do you think? Yeah, it's you, right? Uh, at this point, I, I'm not even sure anymore. <laughs> I'm going to go for... <laughs> Actually, I went first last time. Oh, it's Mandy then. Uh, no worries, I'm keeping track. Oh my god, this, this oh, rotation, I hate it. Okay, anyway, Mandy, <laughs> what do you think? There is so much to talk about in that one segment. <laughs> it was like seeing Joker being a snake, and I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. He's... The cobra and and just like a lot of people would be like, well, wait, shouldn't have he have been a hyena as well? I'm like, no, it's he needs to be a snake because you know the he's sly and cunning. That, but the, and you never know when he's gonna strike. And treacherous. Tre- treacherous, yeah, but it was also like the Joker Venom and reference to the uh. Calling back to Arkham Asylum again, where he makes the Joker venom and everything and stuff, and I'm just sitting here geeking out about it. Just all the callbacks <laughs> that aren't all that obvious, but then they are obvious. Um. Anyway, yeah, the disgusting part of uh, Harley and Joker kissing—that's disgusting. Anyway, <laughs> because yeah, that's not glorified abusive relationships. But anyway, seeing a hyena and a, and a cobra kiss is just something you just don't want to see. That's disgusting. Mm-hmm. But then I got really excited when Batman was frozen. I'm like, they're going to mutate him, and he's going to be Man Bat as a callback to the first episode of Batman the Animated Series. 
okay, the man bat wasn't actually Batman himself, but it was just really cool to see it was calling back to that. I was just sitting there just having so much fun with it. (laughs) Even though I knew, yes, this is just padding out the story more than it really needs to be. And then there was the reference to the killing joke where Batgirl basically manages to wrangle Joker and smashes his face to the floor, breaking his fangs, and then holds him in a, a like a headlock and says, Smile! I'm like, Thank you! Thank you for that! Yes! It's a reference to the front cover of the killing joke where he's taking photographs of her. Um, yeah, there's an alternative cover to that as well, which is probably what this was referencing more, but yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. I mean, there's a lot to, uh, there's a lot to dissect around this. Yes, and I know it was the when they cut back to the Batcave, and there's there's always the inevitable breakup scene, <laughs> and it's like it's not you, it's me, kind of thing. With Batman saying, "You don't listen to orders," and <laughs> you you I wouldn't have been infected if it wasn't for you guys, and then. His son is like, wait, they saved you and everything. And, um, fa- f- <laughs> oh, Hannah means family. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just like, oh, lordy. <laughs> um, oh, just inevitable breakup scenes in these movies just really annoy me. Uh, yeah. But I liked how, um, Raph was just giving him a pep talk and, you know, I think out of all of them, they, those two, out of all four turtles, they connected the most, really. Yeah, but funny thing is, Leo is the one that kind of have more time with him. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not always quantity, it's quality. Mm. True, but... Eh. Anywho, um, done, Maddie? I think so, yeah. <laughs> all right, then. Silver, what do you think? Well, I think Maddie covered all the wonderful references, uh... I was relieved when they when they restored Batman, not because like oh he's he's okay now. It's like oh, we can move on with the story. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> so and I I agree. I mean the the whole point of the breakup scene is to challenge the bonds the characters have had, but we see it so often it becomes fatiguing. Mm. That's true. That's true. And is that so, all? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but by and large, I do appreciate family has been a consistent theme with Batman. Uh, there's a picture of Batman in front of all the various spinoffs that have come with him. Batwoman, Bat, Batgirl, uh, Nightwing, Robin, Red, Red Hood, and he's, and he's just like, cheese. Yeah. <laughs> it is funny, a guy who claims to be a loner... Is actually one of the most family focused uh, members of the DC universe. Yeah. So, and ar- arguably, he's an even better, bigger team player than Superman. It's fun to see that aspect in play here, especially with Raph kind of reminding the Batman, hey, all right, yeah, we drive each other nuts, but that's because we're family. So, a, f- a-, a scene where you're kind of exhaling, yes, please, get on with it. <laughs> yes, get on with it. Get on with it. <laughs> but at least they do, and now we can get to the climax. Yep, that is true. That is true. The the climax here is pretty awesome. But one thing I need to point out because I I kind of forgot to point out is that Mikey is the only one that doesn't know who Batman was, while the rest of the group's <laughs> kind of it's kind of obvious after we found out where the Batcave is. Yeah. Anywho, uh, well, it's sorry? it's Mikey. <laughs> yeah, but he's surprised. Uh, good looking, handsome, ooh, rich. Save some, save some for us. Uh, this movie is quotable. But anywho, uh, Tara, what about you? I mean, Silver and Maddie kind of explained it all pretty well. I just pretty much be explaining the funny moments. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But still, the fu- this movie is all over the place. It's not bad as Pony Life, but. There's so much to dissect. There's so much to take in. But anywho, uh, let's head to the climax. So anyway, our heroes head to Ace Chemical to stop Rush Al Ghul and Shredder from launching the Cloud Seeder. 
and we get to see this awesome uh, scene where the good guys versus the bad guys in their cars or whatever it is and you know what there's too much there's too much to point out so uh, watch it for yourself and I'm going to pause here to let the guys say anything they want to point out uh, guys, you got anything to point out for this one? Just that Robin's jealous of Mikey. <laughs> yeah. Nah, that one was hilarious. I want to push all the buttons. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, it's perfect. But yes, poor, one day he'll be driving the Batmobile and he can push all the buttons. So one thing I need to also point out that there's a lot of death here. Like, I'm not shown, but there's a lot of deaths. Oh, come on. Batman doesn't kill people. Watches Batman be Superman, Dawn of Justice. Okay, Batman kills people. Yeah, or, or the a lot. or the trailer. Um, we, 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 the motorbike scene where the guy rides a motorbike. Suddenly, oh, there's a container dropping, and then like, oh, you don't see the guy, but you just see the bike. He's okay. Well, let's not forget that one where Donatello was shooting the manhole covers, and then he shot one right to a guy's head that was operating the crane. He's okay. He's fine. <laughs> oh, you the, elef- the elephant guy. <laughs> he's okay he's fine I mean, at least we get to kind of see silver when you see a pigeon uh, yeah and the thing with manhole covers you just gotta get the plug out of the way <laughs> uh, <of course. laughs> but anywho after that amazing action scene we see um, the bad guy uh, activating the cloud seeder and before they could do anything the heroes burst in and, well, do an awesome victory pose. But before Batman kind of hit someone with his car. Kind of. Because we see that the guy just runs into it. Hmm. He kind of hits on someone. It's like, hey, I'm mildly attracted to you, but not really. <laughs> uh, I like I like my dates cat themed. Oh, wow. But anywho, Raj al Ghul and Shredder sends out their goons and... Well, the whole crew, well, beats them down in this awesome fight. Uh, one of those scenes where you have to watch it for yourself to appreciate. Oh, go ahead. So, anywho, Batman, Donatello, and Leonardo group up. And Batman says, Shredder's mine. While Leo and Donnie goes after Raz and tries to stop the weather machine. Uh, Raj, you know what? There, there's a lot. There's a lot of scenes here. Oh wow! How, how do I even process this? Honestly, yeah, I don't think you can because there's a lot of stuff happening and a lot of intense scenes. It's like you gotta watch it for yourself. Yeah, I mean, a uh, lot of scenes. So uh, I'm just gonna point out something. Raj Al Ghul beats up on Donnie and kicks him over the railing, and this caused Leo to spark his fear of losing losing his family and gets him in rage and he fights Raz. Uh, somehow Donnie landed near the weather machine and he crawls to it to try and stop it. But before he could do anything, the machine itself operates and flies up. Mikey notices and hops on to kind of join his brother to stop the machine. But back on the ground, we see Leo fighting Raz one-on-one and uh, after remembering the advice that Batman gave him, he calms down and focus and gets to beat up Raz for a bit. And Raz, well, he's he has years and experience on him so he easily defeats uh, Leo. But Leo just says that, yo, I play dirty and I kick you in the balls. And I learned this chakra blocking tactic from an anime not really just my master who is a rat and with that Raz is knocked out Batman fights the Shredder and it seems like the Shredder is winning because he took away Batman's utility belt and it got him on the ropes Batman just says one word that the Shredder would not (laughs) think about which is Kawabanga suddenly Raphael comes in smacking the Shredder with his shell. And with that distraction away, Batman gets the chance to beat him up. While up in the sky, we see Michelangelo and Donnie trying to figure out how to turn off the machine. And 
Mikey just figures, you know what, I'm just going to break things. It seems to work. And it does. So after breaking the machine, they land safely on a blimp. And yeah, from, from this point on, the good guy wins because Shredder is defeated and falls into a bat of Acme chemicals. So yeah, with that, everybody gets out of the burning building and heads to the bat cave. Alfred heals Donnie's wound and Donnie and Batgirl exchange phone numbers and whatnot. Uh, Damien and Raphael bro for a bit and Michelangelo gives Alfred his skateboard. So before the turtles could leave, Batman invites them to have pizza. Yay. <laughs> Even offering a slice to Robin. With that, everybody enjoys a slice and movie ends. Wow, that's a lot. So, mm-hmm. uh, okay, um, Silver, what do you think in final thoughts? Well, I mean, the, the, the action, now that we're past the sort of delaying tactic, it's fun to see the action in full swing. Uh, especially, I, I guess I'm more intrigued when the turtles are going up against the vi- the Batman villains and vice versa when everyone's sort of in their element. With the mutation, it was all brand new stuff that even the villains weren't used to. Uh, like Poison, Poison Ivy being the biggest example. But here, it's just Ra's al Ghul is... He knows his own fighting style. He knows his strengths and weaknesses. So he's in prime control. Shredder knows himself. So you're facing the villains at their best. And so it's, I believe, higher stakes and higher interest for me. Uh, and I, w- I won't go through everything that happens in the climax because you should experience it for yourself. We do learn perhaps the true purpose of them darn blimps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it is important. But it's a fun farewell between of mutual respect. And it's a movie that treats all the characters with that mutual respect. There have been some where you make one party look so awesome compared to the other. Even turtle crossovers with themselves. Wait, what? Yeah. Several turtle series have had crossovers with their 80s counterparts. Oh, that one. Yeah. And like like the, the, what was it, 2007 Ninja Turtles? Mm -hmm. They tried really hard to make the 80s turtles look lame. Say, look how much cooler our guys are by comparison. Yeah. But then it's like, hey guys, you do realize that you wouldn't exist without them. And two, they're the group that everyone keeps referencing because they're the group everyone will remember. Yeah. So, but this one was a mutual respect, mutual celebration, and I loved it. <laughs> all right, all right. And Tara, what about you? Well, I enjoyed this from beginning to end. I mean, like I said, there were some moments that were a bit nitpicky in some parts that confused me. And the whole side plot thing, it wasn't, really necessarily but they have to fill the time somehow and i'm not saying i hate it i enjoyed that part too well like it's, it's just really fun you have to see it for yourself because we didn't really explain much of the action parts because it's it's something you have to see for yourself yeah the action part uh, personally for the review the action part was the worst part to review because it, it's kind of redundant because us explaining a fight scene won't be really awesome because the fight scenes are really good. You should watch it for yourself. Anything more to add, Tara? No, that's All everything. Right. And Mary, what about you? Yeah, this this was just a fun ride from start to finish. <laughs> yeah, okay, there, there was like a slight dip. But uh, I would say there was a dip where they, they slowed down to take time f- to show how the characters interact with each other in their downtime. Or like... You know, just before they go to the where the villains are mutated and stuff, and yeah, we needed that scene. We needed to see them bonding. We needed to show the d- dynamic between each character, etc. I would I would have to call them side villains, although I hate calling them that because they're the great villains in themselves. But it was a little bit like, hey, we have to use all the villains in the Batman universe as much as possible, or at least the most popular ones just to tick a box but yeah. I was delighted that they did that anyway because I would be very disappointed if we didn't see them like just just seeing Harley fighting a turtle as a hyena I'm like I didn't know I wanted this in my life 
you know. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, you got it. Yeah, I was happy. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, it, it ends off with them just having pizza together, and you know, Batman's not such a stick in the mud anymore. It's like, yeah, okay, you guys can't, you guys can't leave yet. <laughs> Not until not until we've had pizza. Yeah, th- th- that's an awesome growth for him. But yeah. usually it's non-canon. Ah. Mm. <laughs> uh, especially with yeah, what I love you- this. <laughs> yeah, same here. But as for me, this movie was awesome. I really love the setup. I really love the uh, scenario itself. One of the few things that kind of. Uh, blur my knowledge for this movie versus what I read was um, in the uh, comic I read uh, the turtles came from a different dimension this one they came from New York so yeah big difference Mm. Uh, another thing that I enjoyed was uh, the fight scene the fight scene was just awesome and the characters themselves well, they portrayed well. They didn't show any uh, one side being better than the others. Like, the story was coherent. The story made sense. The story showed um, proper structure. Uh, what else can I say? Love the humor in this one because there's, it strikes a balance of uh, serious, gritty uh, Batman stuff with funny turtle stuff. Even though turtle... In past history, it haven't been that funny, but still, uh, it struck up a nice balance. So that's good. Uh, and with that, movie ends, or is it? Because in the end credit, sorry, after the end credit, we see the Joker, not really Joker, but Shredder, raising up from the rubble of the factory, revealing himself to be the Joker Shredder. Oh no! Oh no! That's bad. Probably we'll see, see him part. in a future episode. <laughs> and I with didn't that, see that part. I need to rewatch it. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, I didn't I see didn't... that part either. Oh. Silver, did you? Uh, I think I saw it, but I want to see it again. <laughs> and again. Yay! And again. I s- yeah. technically spoiled it. Well, yeah, no, didn't. not really. Yeah, he fell in a vat of Acme chemicals. How could it not happen? Yeah, true. Mm. If you survive, you survive. I mean, I assumed he was dead. Uh, <laughs> probably. But still, uh, go, go check it out. It's so after the end you... credits. Mm. So the Shredder still kind of got what he wanted from Rishal Ghoul, but not uh, really. Yeah, not really. <laughs> uh, but anyway, <laughs> we wave that episode or movie mm. ends. Yay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, I believe the Pony Life train continues. Yeah. Uh so we're going to check in with the most unfortunately named character in the history of MLP, in my opinion. Yeah. Dishwater Slog. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Next week will be, oh, wow. This episode, oh, wow, it was a struggle. Let's just... Oh, it's a struggle. Yeah, let's just say that next week we'll... I'll watch it another time, so next week will be fun. Yeah, next week will be fun. Positive stuff. Yeah, positive. Be, be, be positive. Yeah. Also, Norman, I don't think talking about Pony Life episodes is a struggle. What is a struggle is dealing with Silver's puns. Oh, no. Those... You cannot handle my puns because I am Bat Nixon Steve. <laughs> uh, Bat Nixon <laughs> Steve's puns are just awesome. You, you're the one that didn't know how to handle them. I come back next week for the best of the worst. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that will be next week's project. So anyway, uh, well, <clears throat> if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at mbshow. And my personal Twitter account is at Sanzo. Silver Bat Steve, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can find me on Patreon and Ko-fi and support my videos and comics. Uh, just look for Silver Quill. Uh, on Wednesdays on Equestria Daily, when the new comics start up, you'll find me typing up a review episode, a review of said comics, which are now going to be our season 10. And a search on YouTube for After the Fact or uh, Silver Quill, and maybe in the future, uh, Bat, Bat Nix and Steve <laughs> will also get me to appear. <gasps> Sweet. 
Wait, Batman isn't Steve. Wait, is there anything Batman related? I'm Bat Nixon Steve <laughs> with my utility belt. <laughs> Uh, boys. But anywho, uh, Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortera1324. Or they can just do a Google search and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page. Awesome, awesome. And Maddie, where can the good people find you? Ah, uh, people can find me on the YouTube under Mad Munchkin. Listen to me complain about stuff again. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook and Demon Art and all of that other magical stuff. You'll be able to find me. Just type Mad Munchkin and it usually comes up. Yeah, I'm you're... not good at promotion. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, yeah. If... at least her name isn't Steve, though. Oh yeah, it's Matt Steve Munchkin, right? Mad Munchkin Steve. No, that's the shipping name. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, but anywho, uh, yes. And also, please subscribe to Radio's 19 Ow. YouTube. <laughs> Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. <laughs> and also, Stitch Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on funnyoflife.com. Yes, we are on the... We are over there, too. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. And talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Tristan and also Master Leg, thank you so much, guys. You are great. And also, um, this review here is all brought to you by Tristan. Thank you so much for well asking for this review. I, I know it's been a while, but I wanted to make it special, so we got Matt Maskin on. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. I made it special. Yeah, you did. It was really yeah. awesome. It was really awesome. So anyway, uh, Maddie, thank you for coming on. It was. A bless having you on. And yeah, well, if if you want, come on again. Have fun with us. Talk about ponies or talk about Batman stuff. There's Batman in the future, sure. right? There will always be Batman. I'd be happy to join again if, if you want me here. Sure. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> See, what he means is we need to find a replacement for Safi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't want to replace the Safi. <laughs> don't be mean to the Safi. <laughs> I know, I'm just kidding. Oh, but anywho, uh, yes. Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill slash Batman Snicks and Steve. And I am the Torterra. I am always Mad Munchkin. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the NBS show. See ya. <laughs> bye bye. See ya. <laughs> Didn't think of a funny outro. Dang it, Steve! <laughs> You can't pin that on me. <laughs> I'm blameless. It's all Steve's fault. <laughs> oh no, I'm the new A and Y. <laughs> <laughs>